What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I just want to say, yo, this industry is moving fast. It's at a steady pace, and I am loving it, right? The XRP ledger getting some updates. BIS coming out with new projects for security for this new system. It looks like the project Enbridge uh, version for cross-border payments is what's going to win out, which is really great for XRP holders. Uh, you know, so let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew DeVilbus. Thank you for joining me today. This channel is focused on enterprise grade distributed ledger technology only. I don't do meme coins. I don't, uh, I don't see any reason why I would need to really get into meme coins, stuff like that. But if you're into meme coins, uh, you know, no hate here, but that's just not what I do. So anyways, let's get into it. Bank of international settlements. This is XRP drops, drops that bank of international settlements project mandala shaping the future of cross-border payments compliance transfer any digital asset including cbdc's tokenized deposits right check it out they have a little info video faster cheaper and more efficient cross-border payments are key to supporting economic growth global development and financial inclusion yet disparate regulatory frameworks across jurisdictions may increase the compliance burden which can lead to delays and increased costs. Project Mandala seeks to ease the policy and regulatory compliance burden by automating compliance procedures. Project Mandala is a joint proof of concept between the BIS Innovation Hub and the central banks of Australia, Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore. And here is how it works. Banks initiate transactions by sharing information such as purpose, amount, and beneficiary peer-to-peer. -peer. The Mandala protocol with encoded regulatory and policy measures uses the transaction information provided by the banks to determine which measures might apply. Next, it verifies compliance with applicable measures such as anti-money laundering, countering the financing of terrorism or capital flow management measures through a secure and privacy-preserving method. The protocol generates a proof of compliance with prevailing policies. The proof could be linked to any settlement asset such as a CBDC, a tokenized deposit, or any other payment form. For a sanctions check, for example, the proof provides assurance that neither the sender nor the recipient is included in public and private sanction lists. This is the basis of a modular foundational compliance system allowing for new policies to be included or any payment system to be integrated. Stay tuned for updates as we develop the Mandala protocol further. So Project Mandala, investigating how to streamline compliance processes related to cross-border financing of capital investments. A little bit more about it. Project Mandala explores the feasibility of encoding jurisdiction-specific policy and regulatory requirements into a common protocol for cross-border use cases such as foreign direct investment, borrowing, and payments. That's what I mean when I say, you know, these guys are taking the initiative to push this forward. Uh, you know, you see the Monetary Authority of Singapore here, Bank of Korea, Bank of Nagara, Malaysia, Reserve Bank of Australia. So these guys are really pushing the envelope. They see the they they see the value in distributed ledger technology, ladies and gentlemen, like we do over here. Um, you know, the BIS they're doing a lot a lot of work. There are ex Ripple employees that work in their innovation hub. So you know, obviously they know the Web three world and they know the private Web three world. The private Web three world is going to be like a hybrid. Uh, banks and their back-end systems are going to be able to connect to public heart, uh, public networks when necessary, when the financial services are called for. Um, but, guys, finance is a broad, broad industry. I mean, it is just so much to it. Um, you know, so don't get disheartened. When you hear news, it doesn't mean that certain protocols aren't going to get adopted. That's not what it means at all. And it's actually it's actually good for public protocols to see the banks moving in this in this way so just desperate policy and regulatory frameworks between different jurisdictions are among the chief obstacles to smooth and efficient cross-border payments they contribute to the regulatory compliance burden across the payment chain increase the time for cross-border transactions and introduce uncertainties among stakeholders project mandala a proof of concept 
run by the BIS Innovation Hub Singapore Centre, the Reserve Bank of Australia, Bank of Korea, Central Bank of Malaysia, and the Monetary Authority of Singapore, with the collaboration of financial institutions, seeks to ease the policy and regulatory compliance burden by automating compliance procedures. So that is the uh, that is the goal altogether here. So um, you know, hats off to the BIS Innovation Hub. These guys are hard at work. I mean, they are constantly coming out with uh, documents showing you uh, showing us what they're up to. Uh, it also uh, is addressing key challenges that were identified during Project Dunbar, which developed an experimental mul multiple central bank digital currency platform. So this envisioned compliance by design architecture could enable a more efficient cross-border transfer of any digital asset, including CBDCs and tokenized deposits. Also, uh, VET, two hours ago, VET is one of the validators on the XRP ledger. And uh, VET says L uh, XLS47 is introducing oracles natively to the XRP ledger. Look into it a little bit more. Opening the door to established Oracle providers like Chainlink, Flare, TSO, and Pyth to bring price feeds to the XRP ledger. Can't wait to see the devs tinkering with those. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. Uh, Oracles are a must. Man, I mean, it just keeps getting better. I can't stop. Like, the bullishness is just coursing through me at this point. Ripple X concluded a testing of this amendment prior to the release for voting. No significant influence on ledger validation times during load testing. Response times are also in the range of all one and multipath DEX requests, which is nice to see. Thanks to the engineering for testing and releasing this prior to amendment release. Amazing, amazing, amazing. In other words, in the fintech world, Mr. Man XRP payment network spotlight rise of tokenization and contactless payments. This stuff right here, uh, this is why I love fintech. I mean, it's just so cool. Um, it, it's all Internet of Things technology to me, honestly. Um, payment networks spotlight rise of tokenization and contactless payments. And this was dropped yesterday evening. Um, four years ago, the pandemic began to give wings to contactless payments. Now, as shown by earnings results from the likes of MasterCard and Visa, the payment methodology has taken flight. Also, um, when it comes to MasterCard and Visa, these guys are tapped into RippleNet. So I love to to listen to their quarterly earnings, which, is, you know, their their Q2 earnings probably are coming up right about now. I'm going to look into that and give that a listen. There's always something cool in there. Last time I was listening to, I think it was a Visa. They mentioned that they had a partnership with Neom and Neom is a Ripple partner. And you'll notice uh, a lot of their new offerings, such as like that Visa Direct, uh, definitely is using distributed ledger technology to get a few of these things done. And you know, you know, put two and two together, is it are they doing it through Neom or is Neom doing it through RippleNet? I mean, you know, we gotta we gotta flip that rock over to see what's under it. You know what I mean? And and look into it and do our due diligence. But uh, you know, when I do that, I'll let you guys know what I find. So. Payment intelligence data noted earlier this year that more than half of consumers surveyed said they still prefer the use of physical cards uh, for in-store settings. The tap to pay contactless functionality that's built into those cards has helped transform what happens when we wield them at the register on the, on the aisles. See, I actually enjoy that tap to pay. Now the tap to pay on the phone is really cool. Tap to pay on the card is really cool. Uh, but you know, uh, I'm not putting anything inside me to tap to pay um, for sure. I don't think that's going to be like a really adopted thing. Um, you know, I'm not doing it right. So anyways, uh, both Visa and MasterCard executive leaders said on their respective conference calls that contactless options are a preferred means of transacting in brick and mortar settings. Visa CEO Ryan McLearney said that as we think about Visa's growth, growth, Tap to pay and e-commerce are drivers in the digitization of payments. This quarter, tap to pay grew 5% points from last year to 79% of face-to-face -face transactions globally. So 79% of transactions globally are now tap to pay. Wow. Also, another one from XRP Drops, Martin Watkins, the CEO of Montes Digital, 
And Montes Digital here uh, delivering the market infrastructure required for digital assets to fulfill their true potential. Montes True is the financial market for digital assets is not established. Uh, recognizing the vital role that post-trade utilities play in providing stability, certainty, resilience, and settlement finality to domestic and international financial markets, it is important to adapt to support financial innovation and techno technical advancements in an increasingly demanding digital landscape. The more financial markets evolve to adopt and in integrate digital assets, the more need for digital post-trade utilities to provide the central trusted third-party services becomes self-evident. Montes Digital is creating a new breed of authorized and fully regulated post-trade utilities that enable financial institutions and investors to process digital assets globally alongside traditional assets, delivering the market infrastructure required for digital assets to fulfill their true potential. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not only the people that invest in the liquidity coins of the future, it's also the people that are selling the picks and the shovels that are going to be the main beneficiaries of this transfer of wealth. So let's let the man speak. Right here, he's saying that the market cap of addressable markets is about $1,400 trillion of assets. A great post by Fame21 Moore demonstrates that a CBD, CSD is getting to issue European securities. So that's post down here. We'll take a look after that, after so the video. Let's let the man speak. Uh, increase in total. We go looking at, this, looking at this size of the marketplace because we've got a, you know, a single digital chain of ownership now that we're looking at from issuer all the way through to investor. You know, everything that's out there in capital markets today can be tokenized. And then you can add on top of that real estate, you can add on top um, uh, illiquid securities, S SMEs and so on. So we've estimated $1,400 trillion of assets. The reality is it's more than we currently do. That's, that's what truly matters to us. When we look at where the demand is coming from and uh, the changes, we see that uh, uh, City came out uh, a couple of months ago saying there's an 80-fold uh, increase in tokenization uh, between in the next six years. Northern Trust HSBC said 5 to 10% of all assets because, uh, be tokenized. That's about 19, 19 and a half trillion. BCG came up with a 16 trillion. Whatever it is, it's a big number. So we look then behind that and say, at the size of the marketplace. Yeah, I mean, the market, it, the market that DLT is built to be the underlying rails for, I mean, it literally is all the money. Uh, so that, I think, is where the original term was coming from. The idea that digital assets was going to change the world and it, it's going to bring tokenization of real world assets on chain onto certain chains that have the protocols in place that are needed for great payments, things like that. So you guys know we're a big fan of the XRP ledger over here. Also, Crypto Darren, in tonight's video, a CSD is getting to issue European securities on their ledger, then bridge to XTZ, Matic, HBAR, ETH, XRP, Algorand, European securities, then grow into all legacy value. He states that the market cap of the addressable markets is 1,700 trillion, about 200 trillion off from the last guy. But as you can see here, uh, you got that, that unified area here, and then uh, you have the bridgeways to all these different things, right? If you want the liquidity, the borrowing and lending here, you want, you know, you tokenize something on uh, like Lofty, like put some real estate on Lofty, smart contracts, you know, a super app on Hedera, or you got some privatized back-end financial institution stuff you need to do with Corda, Tezos, Polygon, right? So that this is the multi-chain future we're watching being built out, right? And that's why everyone keeps saying the future is multi-chain. And I know that's for sure. That's a real deal thing. Over here, we focus on the DeFi aspects of XRP. Um, you know, I think that is the, going to be the biggest price appreciation that we see in the future is the actual DEX liquidity for the XRP ledger because it is geared specifically towards payments and swaps so you know that in that swap lines and finance today and repo markets you know guys these things are multi multi trillion dollar markets this is nothing to play with these guys are not joking when they say you know 1400 trillion or 1700 trillion you know the dtcc processes what four quadrillion about a year uh so right um this is what dlt is built to do uh, and I'm just happy that we're all here in a community setting and able to do that. 
Also, going back to Project Mandala, we are going to be deep diving this in the private Patreon. If you don't know yet, we do have a private group over here where it's a due diligence group, a research club. Uh, and so as we're researching, we find more deals and we build a concentrated portfolio uh, with, you know, some stocks of companies that are going to be working with Ripple. We're doing XRP and utility cryptocurrencies. We're also doing a lot of DeFi, some swing trading, things of that nature. So if that interests you, uh, come check it out. There is a free side where there's an intro video to see if you're eligible. Check out that video. See if you're eligible. If you are, come on into the uh, private side of the group and, uh, you know, have your pad and pencil because we do deep due diligence over here. That's what makes you a career investor is the time and effort you put in to gaining convictions on your investments. I'll see you guys in the